Bulletproof Radio, a state of high performance. Okay, let's walk people through that because a lot of people think, oh, you have a disability or something's wrong with your brain, but you kind of kick some ass throughout your life, my friend. Absolutely. <laughs> I do not look at it as a as a disadvantage. I look at it as an advantage. There are yes. certain, our brains, I mean, the, the key is that the research now has cracked the nut. We now know. I remember uh, I was driving uh, a car and listening to a, a show and they were talking about two authors named Dr. Brock and Fernetti Idy, who wrote a book called The Dyslexic Advantage. And I never heard those two words in the same phrase. And I got the book, read it. I, being dyslexic took me a little longer into than I never put it down. And as I read that book, tears were pouring down my face because here I was, 62 years old, finally learning about me. This book explained me to me for the first time. And it was earth shaking because I, I realized I wasn't weird. I wasn't stupid. I wasn't, and I wasn't alone. There's 20% of our population that has dyslexia. And in this book, they so beautifully explain the pathways to success. If you look, most self-made millionaires are dyslexic. MIT calls dyslexia the MIT disease if you go into engineering. <laughs> I'm a field geologist where everything's visual. We're visual creatures. And when I'm in this command center and strutting my stuff, I take in all of these sensors and I create an image in my mind, which we uniquely can do, that puts me down on the bottom of the ocean in total darkness. I'm never lost. It's cool. <laughs> I I had a similar experience uh, in the, the 90s. Wired Magazine ran a piece on Asperger's Syndrome. And I was like, oh my God, they just described my whole family. <laughs> At least one side of my family and certainly my brain and how I see the world. And my brain scanned and I did all this stuff. And certainly was there. And I, I've hacked my brain since then. I don't represent that way anymore. Yeah. But along the way, I did visual training. Yeah. And with Helen Erlin, who's an expert in dyslexia oh, and changing yes. how the brain, do you know Helen's work? Um. And uh, um, she, she looked at me and, and they looked at my eyes and they said, wow, you really do see. And I didn't know that. I see all the floaty crap around all the words, yeah, it's, oh, but I, I don't have that, dyslexia because I learned to track right. Is that yeah. the, uh, uh, there's an Irene syndrome where the letters are moving and they yeah. is, they have, there's a Erlen, yeah. Erlen syndrome and it, it appears that it's the frequency of the wavelength coming into your brain. And yeah. if you put on glasses, I think it's mostly in the blue spectrum. The it depends words, on the different brain. Yeah. And the words stop moving. No, it's just cool to see that we have neurons that are much widely spaced. So we, we have firing mechanisms that are very different. And in some areas we don't hit the target like speed reading, but in areas we hit it into the bullseye. Eye. And the key is to get early detection and learn the pathways to success. Like I said, most entrepreneurs, because I couldn't live in the box. The, the, the rules inside the box were written by non-dyslexics and they were si simply not fair. I live outside the box. But I, <laughs> if you come into this room and you're non-dyslexic, you're going to have a little trouble understanding it. But if you're dyslexic, it's like eating candy. So it's really getting kids to realize, but you also have to understand there's a lot of downside. There's a high suicide rate and yeah. in prison, particularly people of color who didn't have the opportunities I had to get around my issues and conquer them are in prison. 60% of the population of the prisons are dyslexic. It costs more to send people to Harvard than it costs to send them to prison. I think we need to re reevaluate how we're educating people to make sure they go down a road to success. <laughs> 